We are located in our tech shop. This is where our shop bot is located. A shop bot is a CNC router. It is very similar to many of the systems that are located out in industry. This specific shop bot can handle wood that can be up to four foot wide, eight foot long, and six inches thick. It has a variable speed spindle to adjust the cutting speed depending on what type of wood you're using. The shop bot can cut very simple two-dimensional shapes for making cabinets or shelving up through very complicated three-dimensional sculptures. In this case, we're going to focus on two-dimensional cutting of our wood. The way the process works is that we're going to load our geometry in out of Corel Draw, the geometry that we want to cut with the shop bot. We're going to take that, we're going to export it out into a program called VCarve. The VCarve program is going to define all the tool paths that will control the shop bot. We'll save those all out. Once we have those tool paths all saved out, we're going to then go over to the, the shop bot, turn it on, get it all set up. By loading the material, we're going to load the bit. Then we're going to turn on our, our spindle, and we're going to turn on our dust collection system. Once we have that all set, we're ready to cut. We'll go on, run the, sh the, the part files. That will go through, cut the part out, and we'll be done. So let's go into the specifics. I've started up CorelDRAW and loaded my geometry file. As you can see here, I have a, uh, a shape. It is circular. It's a six-inch circular disk with the letter F inside of it. This is what I want to cut out. I'm going to pocket this inner area and leave the F raised and the outer ring raised. So what I need to do is I need to export this file. So we need to do a file uh, export and we are going to select the file type as a DXF file type. I know it's off the screen here, but it's a DXF down here. And I'm just going to save it right to my file here. So we can say export. What we want to do is we're going to export this as an AutoCAD 2000. Uh, we've had issues with some of the newer versions of AutoCAD, although the new version of uh, VCarve seems to be working a little bit better. Uh, so we'll leave, we'll leave units as inches, text as curves, and fill, unfill, uh, unmapped fills as unfilled. And we can say, OK. So that's going to export our file. Now that we have that DXF file exported, we're then going to start our VCarve Pro file, uh, uh, VCarve Pro program. The VCarve Pro will come up, and we want to start create a new file. So in this case, there's a few options that we need to put in on the left-hand side. One is the job size. To know the job size, we need to actually come up with know what size of our part is. And I have a six inch diameter disc, so I'm gonna just make this uh, seven inches by seven inches. And the thickness of my wood that I've selected is three quarters of an inch thick, or 0.75 inches thick. We want to make sure our Z0 is on the top surface. We need to make sure that it's that by default, but we want to make sure that stays there. Our XY datum position by default is the lower left corner, and we want to make sure that we use that. So if it's selected in the middle, or if this use offset is selected, please unselect that and make sure we have the lower left selected. Units, inches, and we're good to go. We can say OK. Now at this point, we want to import our geometry. So we can go up and do File, Import, Import Vectors. And here we can navigate to our directory that has our part. And in this case, Fab Lab here. And I can say Open. And it's going to bring it in and put it on the screen. You can see it's not on our page correctly. And I want to center that up. So I'm going to go and move this. Since our geometry is selected or it's highlighted in purple, with dashed lines, it means it is still selected. So if you don't click off of it, we can move it. So right over here under Transform Objects, the first icon on the left is Move Selected Objects. Everything's selected. We click on that. Now we can move our part. Now we get our crosshairs. I'm going to put it up here and roughly get it right in the center. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just going to be roughly in that location. So now that we have it in there, we can say, uh, apply and close. Now we have our geometry in the center of our part, and now we can start creating our tool paths. 
So in this case, there's two different types of toolpaths that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a profile toolpath and a pocket toolpath. VCARV has the ability to do more types of toolpaths, but we're not going to cover those in this introductory video. So I'm going to click off to deselect all of our geometry. So I'm going to click. It all turns black. That shows that nothing is selected. The first toolpath that I'm going to make is the pocket that's going to pocket out this area. So that area is going to be bounded by this circle right here and our F. So between the F and that circle, we're going to pocket that out. So I need to select both of those. So I need to select one, and then I hold down the Shift key, select on the other. I have both of those selected. Go over to Toolpaths. And I'm going to make a Pocket Toolpath, and that's the second icon, and it says Pocket Toolpath. So click on the Pocket Toolpath. Now we have a bunch of parameters that we need to cover. So first thing, it says Cutting Depth, Start Depth. Zero, okay, and it shows that the start depth is zero. Our Z dimension is our top of the of our work piece. So the t zero is the very top. The cut depth is how deep we want to go. In this case, I'm going to make it uh, an eighth of an inch deep, 0.125. Just click Show Advanced Toolpath Options. That's on by default. That's fine to leave that on. The next thing that we need to click on or select is our tool. Now, the nice thing is, is that we have a, um, a library of tools that we can select from. And in this case, we are going to use a quarter inch down cut bit. And so we're going to click on Select, and it's going to bring up a variety of pieces. Down here under wood, there is a quarter inch down cut. And we can click on that. It has all of our parameters preloaded in there. So by default, we can accept all of those parameters. So we can say OK. Next thing, uh, use larger area clearance tool. We're going to neglect that. We're going to clear this pocket. Since it's going to be milling out this uh, that pocket, uh, we have a couple different options. You can see the, the panel went away. You have to go over here and click on toolpaths or just hover over it, and it'll, it'll bring it back up. There's two different options here. Offset, it shows you an example. It kind of spirals around the shape. Or you can do the raster, where it just goes back and forth. Typically, we use the offset. The cut direction, climb and conventional. It's the, type, the way that we're cutting through the material. By default, we can use the climb. That is fine. Uh, pocket allowance, we're not going to worry about that. Ramp plunge, we're not going to worry about that. Use vector selections, we can leave that unchecked also. So if we scroll down to the very bottom down here, we have name. We can name this pocket. We can take the default as pocket one or we can just call this our first pocket. Now, once we do that, we can calculate our toolpath. It goes through and shows the toolpath on the screen here. What this is, is this is under the 3D view. The red lines are the uh, tool movement where it's not cutting the material. The blue lines are where the material is actually being removed. So what we can do here is we can actually do a simulation or preview of this toolpath. So with this, pre this toolpath on the screen, it comes up automatically with preview toolpaths. And we can say preview visible toolpath. And it's going to go through and actually simulate the cutting of this object. And there it is. And unfortunately, it doesn't look very good here. But if we click, uh, left click, and rotate, we can see that that is what the part's going to look like. Now, if you if you see here, this radius in this corner, if we look back at our geometry, we, it's a sharp corner. But when we go to our V-carve, it's a round corner. The, on those inside corners, the bit diameter is going to leave a radius in there. So it's going to smooth those out. Our external corners are going to be nice and sharp. But just know that, that it's going to be slightly different than uh, what your original geometry is, especially with sharp interior corners. But overall, that looks exactly like what I want it to look like. So that pocket is good. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to cut this disk out, and we're going to use a profile toolpath to cut, cut that out. So I'm going to click on the VCarve Pro tab at the top. That'll bring us back to our two-dimensional view. Now I'm done with these two curves. So I'm going to click off of them to deselect it. And I'm interested in this outside curve. So I'm going to select that. 
come over to toolpaths. And now I'm still in preview toolpaths and I don't want to be there, so I click on close. That'll take me back to the main menu. And now I'm going to do a profile toolpath. And that's the very first uh, icon here. So click on profile toolpath. Again, we have similar options. First is cutting depth. This one is going to cut all the way through the material. So we're going to start at zero. And our cut depth is going to go, I want our material is three quarters of an inch thick. So I want to go just over that, just in case there's any variation in thickness of my material or of the bed itself. So I will go and say point. 7, 8 inches, that's 30 thousandths over. Usually that's pretty good. We don't want to make it too big. I wouldn't want to use one inch because that goes a quarter inch into our table and we have a, a sacrificial uh, top surface on there which uh, just gets eaten up quicker if we go much deeper. So about 30 thousandths over your thickness is, is good. So the next thing is the tool. I'm going to use the same quarter inch down cut bit. So I'm going to click on select, go over to the wood, quarter inch down cut, select that all my parameters, say OK. Next, now we're going to say, uh, we, do we want to cut on the inside, the outside, or on that? So in this case, I want to cut the outside. But in some cases, you may want to cut the inside, or you might want to cut directly on that, that geometry. In this case, I want to cut the outside. Climb direction, or direction, we can use climb or conventional. In this case, climb is going to be OK for us. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, since we're cutting all the way through this material, when it finishes this cut, the part will be loose. And loose parts can sometimes uh, uh, become dislodged in that it might hit the bit or the bit might hit the part and cause some damage to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple tabs here. So under the tabs, we're going to say add tabs to toolpath. It's going to come up with some default length and thicknesses. You can keep them that, or if uh, your geometry is such, you may want to modify that. Sometimes the length, we can make them a little bit thinner. Uh, the thickness, we can narrow them down a little bit. But usually, by default, this works out pretty well. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit these tabs. So click on the Edit Tabs button. And we're going to add a constant number of tabs. There's a few other options, but we're just going to use the top one, constant number. Typically, we want at least two. Three is better, so we're going to put in three. Once we have that, we have this uh, checkbox, first tab at machining start point. We can leave that checked. You can leave it unchecked. It doesn't really matter. I'll show you in just a minute. Once we click on the Add Tabs, you'll see that the tabs actually come up on the screen here. And if we want to move them, we can just click on Drag them around. So if they're somewhere in the geometry that, like at a corner, that we don't want them there, we can just drag and move them. In this case, it's a circle. It doesn't really matter where they are. So in this case, I'm just going to accept it the way it is and say close to our tool uh, tabs. Now I need to scroll down. And now the last thing is to, to name it. So I'm going to say outside profile. And I'm going to do a calculate. It's going to give you a warning. It says, hey, you're going to cut all the way through the material. And yes, that is what I want to do. So I'll say OK. Now it's, you can see that it shows the toolpath on here again. And I'm actually going to go through and preview. I'm going to do a reset preview. That will get rid of everything on the screen. And I'm going to actually click on both of these toolpaths. So they're both selected. And then I'm going to say preview all toolpaths. Now it's going to go through just as it would run on the machine. And it's going to go through and cut everything out. And I can just want to verify that everything looks correct. So on here, I'm going to rotate this around by clicking on the left mouse button. And I can see, yep, it is cutting through. You can see the location of my three tabs. And everything is looking really good. So at this point, we're ready to save these toolpaths out. So what we need to do is click on over here on our toolpaths tab, close our preview. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our save toolpath. So click on this. Now, since all of our toolpaths are using the same tool, we can save them together. Otherwise, we need to save toolpaths based on the tool. So you can make a part that uses different types of tools or different shapes of tools. Um, in this case, both paths use the same tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of my toolpaths. 
and then up at the top it says output all visible toolpaths as one file. I'm going to click that and now it says toolpaths to be saved. It shows first pocket and outside profile. Both of those are ready to be cut. So what I'm going to do now is uh, say save toolpaths. So I can save that out. I can, uh, I'm going to say toolpaths. And then I'm just going to say save. Now our toolpaths are all saved out. They're ready to go. So before we do anything else, what we want to do is get the, uh, get the shop bot all set up and ready to go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load our piece of wood. I've got my piece of wood here that we're going to cut our part out of. It's bigger than seven by seven. But uh, that is fine, as long as it's the, at least the size of our part that we put into VCAR. So I'm going to take this and load it onto the bed. We'll take it, set it on the bed. Typically, we want the edges to be parallel with the edges of the bed here. So we'll line those up. As long as the piece is within the bed, now we're going to secure it down. Typically, we use four screws to secure these down. In this case, I've got... Uh, these four screws, it'll go in the corner. Now we have our wood secured. Next, we're going to load our quarter inch downcut bit. Typically, when you come to the shop bot, there shouldn't be a bit in the shop bot. Sometimes there will be. You may need to remove that before you can load your bit. To load our bit, we need our open end wrench and we need our spanner tool. We have our dust cover that is going around the, the bit right now. There is a uh, thumb screw in the back that we turn that will allow this to come down. We'll remove that off. We'll make sure that we have, uh, that this is loose and we have the right um, collet in there. And we're going to just put this in. We want it, the collet to be on the solid part of the bit, not onto the, the blades. So we can slide that in there. We can turn this on finger tight, then we want to snug this up. We're going to put our tools on here and we're just going to pull it just snug. We're not going to really muscle it on there very tight. They're very fine threads and it can really clamp down onto the bit. Um, sometimes it's very hard to remove if you over tighten it. and We don't want to over tighten it, but you want to have it tight enough. So snug it up. Once the bit is in there, then we're going to uh, bring our uh, dust shield or dust cover back on and we're going to line that up. So basically the bottom of the, the shield here will be flush with the bottom of our bit. And we will tighten the thumb screw back up, put it on there, put our tools away. We have our bit loaded. Next we need to turn on the ShopBot controller. It is located on the unit underneath the cart. We flip the red switch. You'll see the light come on and you'll hear the, the ShopBot spindle fan turn on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to zero the X, Y, and Z axes for the ShopBot. And to do that, we need to start up the ShopBot controller software on the computer. So we're going to start the ShopBot 3 software. So we'll double click on that. It'll come up as long as your controller unit is on you'll get this screen. You'll get the red controller screen and the green uh, command screen. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the spindle head in the X, Y, and Z axes. To do that, we need to click on this little yellow box here, and that will bring up our controller. So these two, com these two arrows move it in the X direction, these two in the Y direction, and we have our Z controller over here. We're going to move, we're going to locate the lower left hand corner of our piece that we set up in VCAR. So our piece is going to be seven inches by seven inches. Our lower left hand corner is going to be here just as if we were facing it from the side. So we want to find, locate the X and Y zero location right over here. So we're going to move the head of the shop bot using the keypad in the X and Y directions. And we can lower this down. Once we have located it, we can then close out of our keypad to X, 
Now we have our X and Y location identified. So we can go up to the menu, click on zero, and it says zero two axes, X and Y. We want to click on that, and you'll see our X and Y axes have now been zeroed out. The next thing we need to do is zero Z. So we're going to use our touch plate. So we're going to take the touch plate. We're going to connect the alligator clip to the threads on one of the bolts, not on the nut, but on the threads. And then we're going to place the touch plate such that it's right underneath the bit. And we're going to set that there. We can then click on our icon. It's the first one right here. It's uh, up and down zero Z. Click on that. It's going to run a program. You're going to get a message that says hit enter when above plate it's above the plate ready to go we say okay they'll give us a warning signal saying it's going to move and then start moving it's going to touch the plate once and it's going to touch the plate again once it's touched it the second time we can now remove the plate you'll get another screen that says remember to put the plate away we can say okay at this point, we have our X, Y, and Z axes zeroed out. All right, I've walked around the uh, computer here over to the breaker panel and our drive controller that controls the spindle. So what we need to do first is we need to turn the power on to our drive controller. We're going to go to the breaker. It's the second breaker down, and it says spindle controller. We're going to turn that on. That will turn our drive on. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we need to warm up our spindle head to make sure that it's up to temperature so it uh, operates properly. So we're going to start it off at 120. So we'll use the down arrow in this case to get down to 120. And once we get to 120, we can then press run. That will turn the spindle on. What we'll do is then we'll let the spindle run at 120 for roughly two minutes. After two minutes, we're going to bump up the speed and we're going to slowly ramp it up. We're going to warm up the spindle head. So in this case, uh, after two minutes, we'd go up to 130 or 150, or approximately there. Sometimes you go over, and that's okay. We'll let it sit here for roughly two minutes, and then we'll continue to increase. So in this case, it'll go up to 180 since I overshot that one before. And finally, we'll get it up to 200. Two hundred is going to be our operating frequency for our spindle head. Now that the spindle's up and running, we're ready to turn on the dust collector. The dust collector is very loud, so please use your ear protection. We do have earplugs by the door when you come into the, the tech shop. Uh, once you get your earplugs in, you can turn the dust collector on. It's the top breaker on the panel. For the purposes of this video, we're going to leave that off so that we can talk through the rest of the, the setup. Now that the shop bot is running, we're going to load our part file. We're going to click on our load part file. We're then going to navigate to our toolpath file that we wrote out of vCarve. I wrote toolpaths. We can say open. And now it says this is our part file. When you're ready to go, we can press start. Before we hit the start button, I want to make sure that we've got our emergency stop here. Once we hit the start button, the machine is going to start moving. And if for some reason it's doing anything that we're that's not correct, we can hit the emergency stop or any key on the keyboard that will stop the shop bot from moving. It won't stop the spindle, but it'll at least stop the shop bot from moving. So at this point, we're ready to hit the start button. Pressing start, it'll come up with a, uh, a window that says make sure that the spindle is running. Our spindle is running, we can say OK. It's going to give us a warning sound that the head's going to start moving. We're watching it. Everything looks like it's running OK. So we're going to continue to watch it. Now 
Now that the part is done cutting, we're gonna turn the dust collector off and the spindle off. So we'll come over to the drive and hit the stop button on the, the drive controller. Once we have that stop, we can then turn the spindle controller off and we'll turn the dust collector breaker off. So next we need to move the head up and out of the way to remove the part. So we're gonna start by clicking on our yellow controller pad. We're gonna lift the head up and we're gonna move the head out of the way. All right, next we're gonna remove our part. We need to break the tabs that we have, so we're gonna use a chisel and a hammer. We've got three tabs, so we'll break all three of these. Now that we've got those all broken, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make sure we get the area all cleaned up. We wanna remove the bit and put it away. We're gonna to wanna to take off of the wood piece by unscrewing it. And then after that, we're going to clean up our work area. We can, we've got a broom and a vacuum to clean up everything, make it clean for the next student. But at this point, we can remove our part. And congratulations, you have your final part.